And guys, this right here, this is a chart you have to buy no matter what. I'm going to go over why JP Morgan is a buy right now, even if the numbers in its recent earnings report were not that great and were actually pretty ominous for the economy. But this chart right here, this is what trading's all about. You have to buy a breakout like this. So let's begin with the technicals. I mentioned this Friday in my recap. I, I mentioned uh, JP Morgan, Visa, and Disney as three charts that looked like they were ready to go this week. And so what I want you to see is this downtrend break. Okay, these are weekly candles. So each one of these is a week for those who don't know. And you can see we've been in this downtrend since early January. Okay, and this was it was over one hundred seventy dollars, and so J.P. Morgan's just been in this long, long downtrend, and it finally broke out last week. Okay, and it reclaimed this huge level, the ten weekly, and it's headed for the twenty-one weekly next. Now, what is so big about this? Okay, if we look at the daily, okay, this chart took back all these huge levels: the ten and twenty-one EMA, the fifty-day average, and the 200-day average is way up here, but that's where we have room to now. Next up, we have room all the way up to $150. But this downtrend break, you could see the MACD turning up. Look at the RSI. It's hitting highs. This is a beautiful, beautiful chart setup, okay? This is, as a trader, this is what you look for when you're saying, when do I go long? When do I sell? This is exactly what you're looking for. And um, if we look at a longer time frame, like the monthly, okay, you can see the monthly candle closes tomorrow for all these stocks. And JP Morgan's putting in an inside month. And that just means a month of consolidation. But we have officially broken this downtrend. Now, this MACD still doesn't look great on the monthly. But I'm going to show you in the earnings report why you have a lot to be bullish about uh, with JP Morgan. Now, let's start with why did we move last week? So JP Morgan popped... Uh, May 23rd, after the bank says it will reach key returns target earlier than planned. So right here, the lender said that a 17% return on tangible common equity remains our target and may be achieved this year. People were not expecting that. JP Morgan rose 6.2%. And that's because it was a big move from earlier this year when the CFO warned that headwinds, including rising costs, would cause the bank to miss its target for the next one to two years. So Jamie Dimon has something up his sleeve. Uh, JP Morgan, though, from their recent report, the economy's not looking hot. And I want to go over this report with you guys, and I want to show you what I'm seeing. So JP Morgan has multiple segments, like any bank. And these are the overall figures. What you can see here is revenue was down 5% year over year, from $32.2 billion to $30.7 billion, while Non-interest expense, this is costs, okay? These were up 2%. So that's not ideal when revenue's down and costs are up. That's obviously why the stock was killed, partly. But this is the part that stands out to me. So you look at provision for credit losses. And this is, this is a segment for JP Morgan where they had basically put money aside during the pandemic, all right? And so... Uh, but obviously, we know that the government stepped in and everybody got all this PPP money, all this PPE or whatever it was called, and all the business owners were saved. And JP Morgan didn't need all this extra money that it had put aside for a rainy day. So what, what this is here, what you're seeing is this $4.1 billion last year in Q1, that's money JP Morgan put back into the company. And that's why you see the earnings are so big here, right? Net income was $14.3 billion a year ago. This quarter, this past one, it was $8.2 billion. And you could see the swing. It was all here. We went from putting $4.1 billion back into the company to putting aside $1.46 billion. Now, why is JP Morgan putting aside that much cash uh, as a provision for credit losses? Well, that's because they think the economy is slowing down and they need to prepare for customers who default on loans, uh, businesses who don't pay their bills. There's so much that JP Morgan's preparing for, and they just weren't doing that all of last year. The Fed had their back, and they had no reason to be worried. So this is something to watch out for here. JP Morgan is telling you, guys, look, we are getting concerned about the economy. 
and we're putting aside one and a half billion. Is that going to be every quarter? Is next quarter going to be another 1.5 billion? This is going to be something to watch. And this is a barometer of what JP Morgan thinks of our economy. So keep your eye on that coming up. Now we go down to the smaller segments. This is regular banking for regular folks, consumer and community banking. This is you and I going to the bank, depositing money, getting loans. This is a big chunk of their business. Now, what you see here that stands out is, look at this. From a year ago, uh, card and auto was $5.4 billion. It's down 8%, okay? And then you look at this here, home lending, right? $1.5 billion a year ago, $1.16 billion in the previous quarter, down 20%. Now, this is before interest rates spiked up this year. And this was in the hottest housing market of all time, we were told, right? Uh, the the realtors keep telling us this is this has been the greatest housing market. Are people just paying cash? I find that hard to believe. Yeah, sure, a lot of investors are, but most people finance their home. And so when you see a decline of 20% in home lending, that's not bullish on the economy. So I, I don't know. You're going to have people who are going to say, oh, well, they're getting loans at other places. That's possible. I mean, JP Morgan is not the most friendly bank to deal with. I, I had to deal with them to get a condo in Miami. I had to put 50% down because of how risk averse they were dealing with condos. So this could be something just JP Morgan related, but it stands out as something that I, I would keep your eye on going forward because a 20% year over year decline in Home lending is not a sign of a bullish economy. And so, again, here, they put aside provisions. Part of the hole we saw above uh, of $678 million this past quarter, when last year they almost put $3.6 billion back into the company that they didn't need. So, again, they're gearing up big time for a lot of people to start defaulting. The next segment is corporate, and it's the same thing. You can see revenue was down 7%, right? but costs were up 3%, non-interest expenses. So every segment at JP Morgan is just feeling the pressure of doing less business, but it costs more to do business. Workers are being paid more. This is just not what you want to see. I mean, you want to see revenues up and you want to see expenses up less than revenue up. So uh, JP Morgan, again, fantastic bank, but th these things are starting to add up. It, you can see here, they're again, provisioning for more corporate losses. So a big swing of almost $800 million from where we were a year ago. And finally, uh, you have their commercial banking, same deal, uh, basically flat year over year, but expenses up 17%. That's a big no-no, okay? That's, that's a huge no-no. They're probably going to have to fire a lot of people in this division because you just, you can't have that. Um, uh, and actually, I said that was last, but last is the asset and wealth management. This is actually the only part of the business doing okay. Uh, you could see a huge jump from last year, right? One of the few segments that saw a revenue jump. Uh, but again, the expenses outweighed the, the revenue gain. So another segment where they're probably going to have to fire a bunch of people, trim some fat here. But um, overall, the whole company is doing okay, but there's a lot of warning signs in here for the economy. And it's just something that if you're a fundamental investor, okay, if you're a fundamental investor, these aren't things you want to see. Now, if we pull up here, you could see banks are usually valued on price the tangible book, okay? PE ratio doesn't mean much with banks. And what tangible book is, is if you sold all the assets at the bank, what is the bank worth, right? And Ideally, you would buy a stock below its tangible book. I mean, that's obviously ideal, but that's really not going to happen with a high quality company like this. Now, you can see at the height of the pandemic, JP Morgan got down to a tangible book of like 1.3. Today, it's at 1.91. All right. And while that is high, uh, it was significantly higher all of last year. So JP Morgan is trading at a pretty substantial discount to tangible book as it was all of last year. And historically speaking, it's basically trading where it was in like 2018, 2019. This is about its range right here. Now, if we come back and we pull up the PE ratio, okay, you can see it's under 10 times gap earnings. Now, that is substantially lower than it's historically traded. Obviously, at the peak of COVID, it got down below eight times earnings. But generally speaking, JP Morgan does not get to this valuation often. It, it spent a lot of time here. 
uh, the last like year. But in general, it trades a bit higher because it's got a premium being the best bank around. And JP Morgan is known for Jamie Dimon, who many consider to be the best CEO in the finance space. So he's part of that big premium, kind of like how Amazon gets that premium because of Jeff Bezos, or it did. But anyways, that's all I wanted to say about that. So back to the charts, guys. This is really what we're talking about, and this is why I'm saying it's a must-buy. You see this? This is a clear, clear downtrend break. Like, it didn't even, like, linger around here. It just gapped up, and it went. And that's just what you want to see. That is just what you want to see. And this marks a bottom. Now, will we come back and test this trend line and fill this gap? Likely, because all gaps fill. I mean, that's rule one of trading. But you can sell puts at this level right here, right? If you sell puts really aggressively between 120 and 115, you can get long this stock. If you're long the stock, I would be aggressively selling calls right here at the 135 level because it's going to have some resistance at the 21 day. But all in all, this is just one of the most beautiful setups you'll see in the market today. And this is a fairly defensive name. Again, it's not wildly overvalued where it's got 30% downside. Yes, the economy might slow. Yes, they're telling you the economy will slow. But all in all, this is right here a good setup for the next couple weeks. Okay, I'm not saying marry the stock, but if you want a name to play for the next couple weeks, JP Morgan. This is what you want to be buying. This is what you want to be selling covered calls on. This is what you want to be selling puts on underneath. And look, the MACD is starting to turn up and the RSI is turning up. Once this goes positive, look at this. We've been negative on the MACD for eight months. So if this turns positive, we might have a run of a few months here. So keep it on your watch list. Get long, sell calls, like I said, be aggressive. But this is a name that's not in a downtrend anymore. And this is what you want to buy. Anyways, have a great Memorial Day, and uh, I'm actually getting a microphone today because a lot of people were complaining, so I ordered one off Amazon, pretty nice one. It should be here today. I'll set it up tonight, and going forward, uh, should have some better audio quality, all right? And I'm trying to figure out how to live stream. I downloaded OBS Studio, and I I'm just really struggling to figure out how to use it to get on. I I've watched some YouTube tutorials. But once I can get it figured out, I, I would like to go on and we can do some live trading Q&A uh, while the market's open. But anyways, thanks again, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.